Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, last time we put our new package in orbit and now we are shooting for the moon. I've already done us the pleasure of setting up the node and so here we are making our burn for it. That's much prettier, isn't it? Just a touch below horizon, how much... Oh, dude, we got so much higher zine, we should probably ditch in on some of that. So, when this estimated burn time gets down to... A, I think total burn time was 7 minutes. I'm starting it a little late, because I wandered off screen to start the recording. So if this one gets screwed up, it's you guys' fault, not mine. But uh, we have to remember to turn the engine off and turn it back on again. When this gets down to below five minutes, I'm going to say four and some change. Of course, we're totally off axis. But electric drain is not that bad. I have all the avionics in the probe. The actual satellite shut down and all of its tanks locked and its battery locked so we cannot forget to unlock those. Watch me do it. Now that I'm talking about it I'm totally gonna forget to do it. How much delta V do we have? 27? So that might be enough to actually put this in orbit. We totally will not have enough to land with it but we're getting there. We're probably going to need a newer bigger launch stage if we're going to actually land things on the moon. So I think this upper stage and its probe were about the limits of what that launch stage would uh, get up here in the orbit and stuff. Which we got left. So we really only need to save 40 or 50 of that for reorienting once we're at the moon. Shut the engine down. Now that we're at three minutes. And light it back up again. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't talk too much and forget to do that. I have trouble chewing bubble gum and walking at the same time. might have to be a mid-course correction, but I'm hoping it'll be small enough that we can do it just with our uh, RCS thrusters. So maybe I should save a bit more, but the more I burn here, the easier, or the more UDMH red-fuming nitric acid we'll have left over. Damn scatterer, that is pretty. What happened? Oh, come on! Really? Really? Tell me this is just a random fucking failure. Motherfucker. Engine shut down. Ah! God damn you, test flight! Fourteen hundred probe has nowhere near that much. Son of a bitch. Let's see how much we can get out of it. Not nearly enough, I assure you that. We're probably going to have to make another lap. Why am I even trying? There's just no way. And to think I said all of those nice things about you, AJ-10. I said all of those nice things, and you still... You desert me. Alright, well... We do have a nice comm set. 
And I'm sure that there's... Yep, there it is. We'll get 3.8 science for this. Unlock your batteries. Unlock your tank. Activate your avionics package. Decouple. Get you just away from the Agena stage. And let's orient the panel towards the sun. Oh, all right, fine. All right, and we can't, we probably can't deorbit this, but. I feel like we should try. Failures deserve to burn up. And if we're going to do it, we should do it here. How much delta V do we need to impart to slam this thing into the atmosphere? Not a whole lot. That's awesome. I don't know if we're going to have range enough to do that. And I really hate telling Flight Computer to do stuff. No, in one hour. Well, let's see what happens. It was going so well. I'm really curious now if that was <clears throat> just a, a randomized failure or if that was actually exceeding the burn time because the engine didn't really get a chance to cool off very much. So. Well, we've got a new comm satellite up. probably use its gen engine to put it in a more circularized orbit, at least get some kind of use out of it. Alright. Periapsis will be within the atmosphere real soon. It might take a pass or two, but uh, hopefully we'll get it burnt up. Oh yes. Uh, we're going to make sure you get a fiery death, you failure. And with no hydrazine to save you. Whoop. Yep. <laughs> That's good enough. Alright. Let's ride it home. really does look like it's just falling straight down. <laughs> How close are we to daylight? Oh, you'll never make it to daylight. Yeah, daylight is at our perigee. And this is going to explode long before then. Sorry, I tried to come out of time warp to enjoy that, but oops, I was going to go adjust that probe's flight. Mm. Yeah, sounding rocket high. At least we got that one. Take our satellite out for a spin. Why not? 
we can at least use what fuel it has to try to circularize. I don't think we're actually going to be able to. This thing's only got like 500 some odd meters per second. Yeah, you can get rid of that node. You're never going to make that happen. Yeah, that's already way beyond the threshold for this little guy. But, maybe, at least it'll be a useful relay. Alright, let's get in there and make some things happen. Engine is clear. And burning. Run a science check. Oh, well, still in space near. So, probably no profit on this one. Probably shouldn't run the tank dry. I'm going to want a little bit left over in there to reorient. So completely aggravating all the time. Yeah, at least we got it above two million. Maybe we'll hit three? I guess, yeah. And cut it. Kill the node. Let's angle a panel in. Still a draw, but we can manage that. Shutting down avionics. And now the batteries are charging. Eh. <laughs> it is also within a half a degree of the moon, and that's pretty cool go to the Space Center. And I'm glad I built two, but, uh, you know, I think I'll just leave the next one until next time, because otherwise the, I'm going to have like three episodes in a row where it's the exact same thing, or two at least. So we're going to call it quits on that one. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Sorry this one was so minuscule and also frustrating and sad. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. I'll see you next time. See ya.